Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose is to inspire your spirit. And today we have one of our weekly channeled conversations with the afterlife. We will be speaking to Alan Thicke. Do you remember Alan Thicke? He was that great TV dad from Growing Pains. Well, that's at least that's how I know him. Uh, and so I thought, hey, let's interview him. Let's chat with him in the afterlife. All right, so let's bring him forward, see if he's willing to come in. All right, so I can feel his energy. He's kind of kitty corner here from me and he kind of looks, he's got kind of this, um, it's kind of funny. He's got like this white kind of bubble of light, like a cloud around his head and <laughs> like a heaven, um, a heaven or afterlife a uh, cartoon kind of thing almost like you know blue sky and kind of a bubbly cloud and then his head kind of appears like I see his profile the view of him and he's smiling he actually has glasses on and um, I can kind of now I'm kind of seeing his face and he's showing up more clearly I can see the features of his face he kind of feels like he has a little bit more of a not quite an oval face but more of a little bit more of a rectangle face um, in his features and that's how I see him and um, just looking at him, he looks like he's probably in his 68. So, uh, in his late 60s, mid to late 60s, not 65. I'm older than 65. He's like going up. He's like, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, you're welcome. I don't think he's 70. I think he's just shy of 70. Um, I feel like he died of... Um, can you tell me what you... Can you give me some kind of... Um, information about that because I'm not really sure. Um, I kind of, I'm, I'm a little mixed here, you guys. I feel heart. I have heart issues. I don't know if he was on heart medication or if he actually had a heart attack previously or if that was the, he's like, uh, that's not really the reason why I passed. It kind of looks like there was um, like something going on with the heart and the blood and then like something went up to the brain and kind of like just, I don't know what it is. It, it's, Sorry to be so graphic, you guys, but it feels like a pop. It feels like a little blood vessel kind of went up, like a blood clot and pop kind of thing. And so it feels like it was a two-step process or a three-step process, or it was a process. And he said, I, I wasn't surprised. He said, I feel like he had heart issues anyway, or heart, or he was aware of how he needed to take care of himself or his heart. And it could be because his dad had heart issues. I feel like it may be a hereditary thing that does feel accurate to me. Again, I don't know how. I don't know how he died. I don't know how old he was. I don't know the details about him. He just popped in to as somebody that I thought would be kind of fun to talk to. You know, I, I've been making my rounds in the movie genres and now it's the sitcom eras. And so, um, can you talk a little bit about, uh, and it's kind of nice because it's not like when I ask him about how he died right away, and usually I don't necessarily, I shouldn't say usually I don't do that, but I kind of, I used to feel like it was really rude to do that, but he right away was, he's making me feel, me feel as the medium, very comfortable. Like it's just a matter of, it's just a fact of life. Oh, that kind of thing. You know, Facts of Life was a TV show also during the time of Growing Pains. So he's like, it's just a fact of life, you know, kind of thing. He's funny. He's charming. He loves golf. He's telling me he loves to play golf. Um, he looks rather tan. So, and I'm thinking, I'm feeling um, the words Palm Beach. So I don't know if it's Florida or California. I'm feeling like I'm going down to Florida for something. And then maybe for golfing, maybe to relax, maybe there's a vacation there, maybe there's a family home there, but I feel like I'm going down to Florida. I'm going down to Florida. That's how I feel. I feel that. To be by by the golf courses and the ocean. I really feel like he liked golf. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but I see him mowing the lawn. I don't know what that's about. Why would I see Immaculate Yard or something? <clears throat> something something funny about lawnmowers or mowing the lawn or the sound of the lawnmowers or the cr fresh cut grass or something. Um, he's giving me like um, sensory experiences. Like I, I can hear the lawnmower and I can feel the vibration on the handle, like the old push mowers. He's like, remember when you used to do that? Oh, um, so did you mow people's lawns growing up maybe? Did he make some money? I don't know. Um, <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm, he's giving me the sensations and lots of green, tons of green, tons of green. And it smells like, you know, fresh cut grass smells like. Whew, his energy feels uplifting, positive. I feel like he could be a motivational speaker, like really inspiring. Like, I feel like 
positive effect on other people. I feel like he wasn't one of the creepy people in Hollywood. He was, I feel like he was a stand-up guy. He says, thank you. He said, thank you. Um, I feel like he was friends with uh, Michael Keaton. Does that make sense? Unless he's referring, are you referring to another? <laughs> because there's another TV show. There was another TV show right about that time um, with Michael J. Fox. Um, family ties maybe he's oh he's comparing himself oh he's got such good energy i feel really good talking to you alan you just have just a great energy he says thank you thank you he says so do you back at you he's like trying to be cool back at you he's got like this um bomber jacket on remember how that was like cool to have those bomber jackets it's like a brown leather jacket and he's like all cool he's like right back at you um he's comparing himself to the other tv dad um who i believe the character's name was michael keaton i know there's an actor that is also named michael keaton um but i think he's referring to the other dad other dad in his sitcom family ties and I think his their names were Keaton and I think I think the dad's name was Michael. I think so. I'm not 100% sure on that. I got to fact check that, but I think he's comparing himself to other TV dad. Now, it may be that they may have been up for some kind of an award and the other one of them got it over the other or that kind of thing. Um, but it, like a little bit of a friendly kind of bantering competition kind of thing, but really really nice. Like Alan, really 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 nice guy. I feel like he has kids. He at least has a couple of daughters. It looks like two daughters and maybe a son. Um, but it does look like he may have been remarried, so he might have a stepchild, a stepson. Um, he also has grandchildren. He's like I got grandkids. I think he's got six. Um, maybe at the time of his death. I feel like he died 2015, 14, 16. Uh, He's like, I almost died a few times. I feel like he had heart stuff. I really do. There's something going on with that body. Like not, like it's not super healthy and he knows it. So he's got to monitor. Um, I feel like it's heart related. It could be blood pressure. I feel like it's heart related. I don't think it's diabetes. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like heart related. Um, hmm. So I feel the kids stuff, six, I think six or seven grandkids at the time. I was trying to get the time of your death. So take me back, 2017, 2016, 14. 14 sticks up to me. 14, 2014 and 2016 stick up to me. And I don't know if it's because it was a year after, 17. Did he just recently die? Maybe he did. I don't know, I'm super bad. You guys, I'm so bad with time. So it was between 2014 and 2017 that he died. Um, <clears throat> he's mentioning somebody named Joan. I don't know who that is, but somebody named Joan. And so again, I feel like he was married and divorced, so he had two different, I think, um, marriages. And, and then he just said, yep, and I think he said, you missed one. Or I missed one. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I missed one? That's interesting. So, oh, what does that mean? I missed one. I missed one of my marriages. I missed one. I feel like he married a childhood sweetheart. And then I feel like either it didn't work out or he came back to his childhood sweetheart. Like I feel like this romantic, really young love energy, unless he means I should have married her. I should have married my high school sweetheart kind of a thing. Um, I see somebody named Margaret or Peggy. He's referring to as Peggy. I think he's been in movies. He shows me a couple of movies. He shows me an old time movie like um, with old cars, like 1950s cars. Um, I, I feel that. So I think he was, I know he was in at least two, three, I think he was in three movies that I would maybe recognize if I looked back um, over his career. Um, he says he had a lot of respect for the writers for the show and shows. I feel like he's been on two shows. I don't know what other sitcom or what other TV shows he may have been on, but I feel like he's showing me two. Um, and... I see him, he's saying, I was just a regular guy going to the grocery store kind of thing. And like, he wasn't bothered by other people coming up to him. Um, he just kind of took it all in stride. It wasn't a big deal to him. It was just part of life, <clears throat> part of the experience of being an actor, I guess. And he says, um, 
he goes back to the writers. He says, I have a lot of respect for the writers. I don't know if there was like a writer's strike during the time that he was on his show or something, but he's like supporting, showing support for the writers. Like he really wants to say, hey, support the writers. Without the writers, all of this wouldn't be possible. We can only do so much, he says, with stand up and improv. He said, let's be clear on that. There has to be a decent storyline in order to follow. And he says, Growing Pains in particular is one of those those shows that will transcend time. You could watch it today and you would get the same kind of values and the same kind of feel good vibes that that you got then. And he says, you although we tackled some challenging issues, we did it in ways that made sense for the time and also I think transcends time, he says. It's it's a it's a good legacy to have and I think it would be totally applicable today, except you know, you'd have to add some smartphones in, he says. You have to add some smartphones in. So that kind of thing. And then he has glasses on like he's trying to read them. He's like trying to read the smartphones. He also talks about liking to read, read books. Like I see books, stacks and stacks of books. Um <clears throat> and going to college. I don't know what that's about. Uh Stacks and stacks of books and going to college. Not sure what that's about. Um, is there anything that you would be able to tell us that would help us to be better people? So like advice from the afterlife, now that you're like a spirit, right? Because you're crossed over, you're like fully on embracing spirit life. I can feel that, correct? He's like, absolutely, absolutely. And it doesn't feel like you're reincarnated. Oh, no, not yet. That's, I'm, it's too early for that, he says. Yeah, I'm thinking he may have died recently, like 2016. I don't know, 15 maybe. I'm so bad with the times. He says, oh, it's okay. <sighs> It's okay. All right. So uh, let's see. So what kind of advice would you give us to be uh, so we can be better people? Advice from the afterlife. He says, don't worry so much. He's like, don't sweat the small stuff. It really doesn't matter. Like in the grand scheme of things, the stuff you're worrying about really has no bearing on the outcome, the ultimate outcome. And when you have the chance to stand at the doorway and look back upon your life, you want to make sure that you took advantage of every moment that you had. Every moment. Every moment that you had. And invest in your relationships. That's the other piece of advice I would give, he says. Invest in your relationships. Because that's what lasts. After you are gone, done and gone, the relationships that you've built lasts. That will sustain your loved ones. That will sustain your family is those relationships. That's important. You got to invest in relationships, your relationships. Thank you. <clears throat> that's awesome. <laughs> great, great advice. Great advice. Oh, I wanted to ask one more thing as well. Um, so at the time of transition, I've asked other um, other energies that I've spoken to, um, what what was it like? Like, can you describe a little bit maybe? Give us a little clue as to how it felt for you at the time of your death when you left the body, like after you left the body. Like, were you surprised about how, how you felt or what, about the afterlife? How did you feel about that? Can you share a little bit about your experience? He's like talking about how it's kind of like squeezing a balloon, like a balloon with air in it. And you're, you know, you have a, so you have a kid that has a balloon and it's starting to like lose its air. He's like, I'm not talking about the helium ones. I'm talking about just a regular old school balloon. And it's kind of, you know, you're squeezing the balloon, the kid's playing with it, they're squeezing it because it doesn't have a lot of air in it. And all of a sudden, boom, it's done. It's gone. And there's kind of like a startle, like a shock, like a, oh, oh, okay. And then there's just air. There's just nothing. All of a sudden there's no edges, there's no body, there's no, there's just, it's just your, it's like, I would describe it. it this might sound a little freaky, he says. These are his words. This might sound a little freaky, but it feels like air. Like it just feels like, like air. There's no... There's no boundaries, no edges. It's just air. And it really feels quite nice. It's much more relaxed because oftentimes when 
I think when in our lives we experience the stress or stressful times or stressful moments, our bodies get tense, really tight. And especially when you're sick, like it's like you're working so hard to keep your blood pumping, to keep your heart moving. To, you're very, you're aware of the things your body is doing to try to keep itself going to sustain you. And it's just so hard. It's working so hard that when you just let go of that, then there's just this, there's air. There's just this nothing. There's none of that stress. There's no, there's no pressure. There's no intenseness. It's just, everything's lighter. You feel, there's a feeling of air. Just air is the best way I would describe it. And I'm sure it's probably different for a little bit different for everyone. So, but that's, that's my account. That's how I felt. Okay. And then he says, aren't you going to ask me who greeted me? <laughs> like, yeah, like heaven's not a place. I know that, but it's a sens sensation or an energetic experience or expression of whatever our mind, I know this, Bridget's talking here, of whatever our mind um, expects to ha that helps us to transition, that helps it to not be so odd or weird or awkward for us to make that transition. But um, yeah, so tell us, did somebody greet you? Did you go like to the light or anything like that? And he said, it was nothing like that. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that for me, he says. It wasn't like that for me. He says, but I know that my loved ones were there that have gone before me. I could see, I could sense my grandma, feel, see. You don't really have eyes. It's not the same kind of thing, he says. But I knew, I know in my knowing that my grandma was there. And the knowing is the spirit that you talked about. He's referring, I just did a video about this, about intuition and soul connection. So he's referring up to that, back to that. Um, it's that knowing is that soul acknowledging, recognizing grandma familiar energy. And so he says, my grandmother was there to greet me. If, if there was a greeting, there wasn't really a greeting. There's just much, a, there's just this awareness in this air space is how it feels. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alan Thick, you were just a pleasure. What a pleasure. What a nice energy vibration that was. Very nice. Remember, Alan Thick was the dad on Growing Pains. So that's not your genre. That was my genre. So it was kind of fun to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it very, very much. This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Remember, our goal is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope. And remember, it's your life, so live it. Thanks for being here.